Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. We have our fourth flight, which is the stock King Air C90 from New York to Boston. And we are continuing to listen to the Apollo 12 audio with uh, Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and Dick Gordon. And so I'm gonna play that. And we are going King to proceed. 20. Oops! That's from the beginning. No, I don't want from the beginning. We're not starting over. We're picking up where we left off. We're standing by for this. Oh, Houston, go ahead. Much better. Okay. So with that and. Uh, Houston, this is 12. I just that's stated good. that I have quad alpha and Bravo disabled with the auto RCS. Uh, that's Roger. good enough. Okay, here we go. Yeah. On to Boston. Uh, read three theater. Go ahead and verify that the uh, O2 heaters are in auto. Both O2 heaters are in auto. Roger, Al. Retracing our earlier statement with regard to the uh, uh, one amp higher. Uh, this is not uh, viewed with significance uh, in the Mission Control Center at this time. It's uh, possibly a change in calibration, uh, but uh, we can't really tell. You probably At, shouldn't uh, do this hours, in real life. Uh, 41 minutes uh, into the flight, uh, we show Apollo 12 uh, with an altitude of uh, 41,129 nautical miles. At the O2 again, and reading uh, tank 1, 758 and 777, tank 2, it's coming up slow. So that's JFK as it is in here right now. Certain lack of planes, gotta say, though uh, they would create more lag for us, so maybe that's for the best. We already have quite intense scenery. Okay, we're gonna leave our uh, right around here. Roger, that's a good idea. Looks as though you just have some stratification. It's gonna take a little while to uh, mix it up. Okay. We'll just lightly swing by Manhattan this time on our way to Boston. Or, you know, I thought it was pretty well covered by the 737 flight. We'll keep our distance. Let's... Let's just go straight to Boston, I think. 12, Houston. If you see some pop yeah, yeah. in, that's 3P uh, FPS low. here. You can uh, go ahead and start the roll. Now yeah, we've got clouds uh, anyway. Pitch and yaw looks pretty good, huh? That's a firm. Hey, we've only been waiting about 10 minutes. Dick, looks good down here. We're ready to go. Oh, I'm with you. I just figured uh, it only took 10 minutes. Houston, go ahead. All right, we're still vetting this cabin overboard. Uh, we're, I think we should have terminated that about eight hours. Can we go ahead and terminate the cabin perch? Dick, uh, we show that we ought to go on with that till about 12 hours. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've had enough of Manhattan and the well, lag. Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Pete, we'd like you to take the uh, S-band antenna to the Omni and go to the uh, Bravo position. Okay, uh, S-band Omni to Bravo. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of layers of clouds today. I don't know why I have my GPS permanently set to Dublin, but... Well, it'll be right at one point during the flight, maybe. I mean, during the 80 flights. Houston, go ahead. Roger, uh, let us know when you think we can uh, de deactivate the evaporator. Roger, Dick, will do. Thank you. Dick, you can go ahead and uh, deactivate that now. Okay. I think I've seen a mod that improves this plane on the forums. Might have to pick that up. Always dicey what people might consider an improvement, though. We're still climbing, trying to get out of the clouds. We're over Long Island Sound now. Dick, we copy. The lithium hydroxide is what clears the CO2 out. Basically captures the CO2, the carbon dioxide in the in the cabin. Guess that's uh, something like this, maybe. Roger, twelve. Copy. Evaporator secured. Always trying to get the best views. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 9 hours uh, 1 minute now into the flight uh, Apollo 12. Uh, we currently show uh, an altitude of 42,763.7 nautical miles and a velocity uh, now reading uh, 8,966 feet per second. Since the uh, conversational pace uh, has slowed considerably in this phase of the mission, uh, we do plan to take the uh, live release line down and tape if uh, for a periodic playback however if conversation does pick pick up uh, we will bring the line back up again at uh, nine hours uh, two minutes into the flight as you heard reported uh, from the spacecraft uh, by dick gordon the uh, first canister canister change uh, has been made uh, and uh, it's expected that the crew will take some time uh, for an eat period. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Yeah, they've had quite a busy day. I expect they're going to wrap it up and uh, call it a night. And thankfully, uh, we can just uh, skip through all that. <laughs> so, mercifully, it'll just be the PAO hourly updates and then we'll get through that relatively quickly and back to the action.
unlike what I did with the Apollo 11 treatment. So I'm, I'm planning to hang out at 10,000 feet here. We're right between New York and uh, Connecticut. I like the nice long wing on this. Among other things, I should probably pick up our uh, better liveries. This is not quite my style. Well, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. We have some uh, folks back here interested in your comments about the uh, vibration during the F-2 burn. Could you uh, quickly uh, give us a few uh, clarifying remarks on that? Yes, that's important. It seemed to me it vibrated all the way through the whole F-2 burn. Uh, it did. Uh, <laughs> that I could see all, and let me ask the other guys. I point that out because that's going to yeah, be a problem. Just, uh, yeah, very small, low amplitude uh, vibration, you know. Uh, just, uh, just a little shaking all the time throughout the whole burn. So Roger, Pete, uh, do, you, do you have any feel for the uh, direction and the uh, frequency? Well, I wasn't longitudinal, and uh, I don't know, uh, a couple of C uh, a couple of CPS, really, I guess, uh, or less. Cycles per second. So Roger, Pete. Uh, well, of course, on Apollo 13, that stage nearly shook itself to pieces. Uh, the center engine shut down early and saved it. Pete, we don't have the uh, folks here, the booster folks here, looking at the records right now. Okay, yeah, uh, understand. They should have taken uh, that more this, seriously. Uh, control Houston, uh, nine hours, uh, six minutes. Uh, now into the flight, uh, you heard uh, uh, Pete Conrad. Conrad uh, reflecting uh, the uh, power on the powered phase of flight, uh, specifically the second stage uh, uh, part of the boost phase uh, with Ed Gibson on the ground. At uh, nine hours, uh, six minutes, uh, continuing to uh, stand by in Mission Control Center. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Mind you, that wasn't the big problem with Apollo 13, but it was certainly a significant problem that could have caused even a worse situation so luckily it did not but it very narrowly could have that stage was always problematic they fixed it up after Apollo 13 uh, not perfectly it still had oscillations and vibrational issues but it was within hey, tolerances we haven't used the little uh, uh, separator on our water gun, and uh, we're working off the. Uh, they have a water gun, <laughs> apparently. Separator, you don't want it to be on the right hand side of the LED, and it's uh, very good water so far. It's got a few bubbles in it. Real good, Pete. Nothing but the best for you. <laughs> oh, we're a little bit higher than I wanted. We're at 12,000 feet, so for an unpressurized cabin, basically the limit. We're over Connecticut now. Past Stamford and approaching Bridgeport. Go ahead. Go ahead. Folks down here have been looking over the... Uh Lem E mod, and it looks very good to us. See no problem. Would you also take the uh, O2 fans, put them to off? We're, oh, uh, there's a cop car on the highway there, it the looks like. 883 and 893. At least I think that's why it's so bright. Okay, they're both off, thanks for the information. Well, a few the, of them. Uh, Roger. I think those are all blinking uh, red and blue with really bright lights, and that's why we can see them from up here.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 9 hours uh, 36 minutes now under the flight Apollo 12. We've had no further conversations uh, with the spacecraft uh, since our last report. However, we thought we would uh, provide you an update of our current altitude and velocity. Presently, uh, we show the uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft at uh, 45,708 uh, nautical miles above the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 8,623 feet per second. At nine hiccup hours, here. 37 minutes into the flight and continuing to uh, monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. I think this will clear up in a few seconds, but... There we go. All right. Light continues. Approaching Bridgeport, uh, which is now sort of visible there. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, Odd take 10 hours problems. Uh, ground elapsed time now into the flight of Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 spacecraft uh, now at uh, 47,619 uh, nautical miles above the Earth. Currently uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 8,418 uh, feet per second. Uh, since our last report, uh, we've had uh, some conversation uh, with the crew of Apollo 12, and uh, we'll pass that along to you now. The airport visible on our right is Apollo Igor Sikorsky Memorial. Go ahead. 12, if you'll go to uh, Poo and accept, we'll give you a new state back there. Uh, negative on the Poo, just accept. Okay, 12, it's coming up. We're looking uh, for a mid-course 2 tomorrow at uh, 31 hours, about uh, 61 feet per second. And also, uh, we have here an update to an erasable load in your alternate and contingency checklist on uh, page 1-32 when you're ready to copy. So that's Sikorsky uh, right there. On the flight plan and transfer it later. Is it TFM? That's affirmative. And that update is, uh, there's two lines. Column B, line 4, 14616, line 5, 13744. I don't know why occasionally the clouds contract okay. like that. What page was that? We got column B, line 4 is 14616, and line 5, 13744. Roger, L numbers are good, and that's on page uh, 1-32. In your all we got agency it. checklist. We got it. 12, the uplink is complete. You can go back to block. Roger, what'd you give me? Gave you a good state vector. You mean I ruined it, huh? Ed, are you telling me that I ruined it with my P-23? Dick, uh, stand by on that, and we'll see uh, what your P-23 did do. <laughs> Again, the P-23 is a command. P-23 did uh, improve your state vector. However, we had a little longer time to work on it, about six hours worth of miss in, and uh, so we gave you one uh, a tad more accurate. Thank you. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, as you heard, uh, Ed Gibson uh, passed up our uh, forecast uh, mid-course correction two. Uh, this is the uh, mid-course correction that uh, takes uh, the spacecraft out of a free return and places it into uh, its what is known as a hybrid trajectory. Uh, this time identified as uh, 31 hours, uh, which would be uh, tomorrow. And uh, a delta V of 60, uh, or a velocity change of 61 uh, feet per second. Uh, chatting with Ed Gibson uh, during this uh, conversational phase were both Al Bean and Dick Gordon. The uh, P-23 referred to uh, Program 23 uh, is uh, 
one of the uh, computer programs uh, which is uh, cislunar uh, navigation uh, where uh, command module pilot uh, Dick Gordon has been taking uh, star sightings and updating his own uh, state vector. So at uh, 10 hours uh, 4 minutes into the flight uh, continuing to monitor this is Apollo Control Houston. 61 feet per second is about 20 meters per second, by the way. We're passing by New Haven now, New Haven, Connecticut. That's the city you see there. And the airport is Tweed, New Haven Airport. Don't know what that's named after or who. Sikorsky, I knew. This but. is Apollo Control Houston at 10 hours uh, 30 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Uh, we currently show the Apollo 12 spacecraft at uh, 49,972 nautical miles above the Earth. Its velocity uh, now reads uh, 8,175.7 uh, feet per second. Uh, we've had conversation uh, with Apollo 12, and we'll pass that conversation along to you now. Houston 12. 12, Houston, go ahead. Are you want the P-52 at 10, uh, about 10.45? Stand by on that, B. Okay. P that P-52 is really your option. Uh, we don't need it. You can uh, go ahead and do it if you like. You have one coming up at around 15 hours, and that would suffice. Okay, we'll wait. Roger. Apollo 12, Houston. 12, we're still looking at a uh, current going over to the limb, which is uh, about one amp higher than before it was manned. Uh, it still fluctuates, but the uh, mean is still about one amp higher. So we're faced with the uh, question of whether we have outer configuration in the limb. And we'd like to suggest that you uh, go on back over to the limb and check the circuit breaker configuration. The possibility here is that you've got a system online which uh, is not called out for and doesn't have proper cooling. I'd like to have your thoughts on that. Uh-oh. They made a boo-boo. Okay, uh, we're going to go back over uh, if uh, you want. Now, we left those two panels, as far as I know, in a proper configuration, but we'll go back over the... Uh, or it might have. Uh, thought that I had. I noticed when I closed the hatch that, that I tried to get the hatch all the way up to the very corner and watch the lights go out. I know the light switch works on the hatch because I tried that, but that'd be about the only other thing I could think of that didn't work. Okay, so those uh, floodlights did go out when the hatch was closed. Well, no, I don't know that they went out. I'm saying that if you push the switch, it went out. Okay, that indicates at least that uh, you didn't have the uh, switch out of position. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, as you heard that uh, discussion between uh, capsule communicator Ed Gibson uh, in mission control and uh, spacecraft commander Pete Conrad, uh, there is a, a very distinct possibility the crew will make a second trip into the lunar module uh, this evening. Uh, Heck of a busy day. To uh, explore or check the uh, positioning of uh, circuit uh, breakers aboard the LIM. The discussion dealt with uh, a consistent number we've been seeing, uh, one in which uh, the, uh, there's been a reading of one amp higher since, uh, uh, or one amp difference uh, since the uh, two crew members had gone over earlier, or uh, a reading higher than had been reflected uh, previously. Because of this uh, possibility that uh, Conrad and Bean uh, will return to the lunar module, uh, we propose to leave the uh, release circuit up and live at least uh, for a while. And at uh, 10 hours, uh, 34 minutes into the flight, uh, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control Houston. We're still over Connecticut, uh, out at the left wing there is Hartford. 
And we're making good time on this flight, actually. We're going pretty quickly. And we might get there in less than an hour, all, all told. Which is good. I mean, I'm not wanting to rush through Connecticut and a tiny corner of Rhode Island and some of Massachusetts, but, Houston, we're on our way back in you know. Roger, Pete. We get the world record for ingress egresses out of this baby and a couple of more. <laughs> Raj, give us a mark. This river right here is the Connecticut River. Appropriately named. Peak, we assume that you uh, powered down the circuit breaker panel as uh, on activation three and four. Two circuit breakers there uh, that should be out which are shown in one is utility light, which we discussed, and the other under ECS, panel 16, the cabin repress, should also be out. That was closed in a previous step. We'll check them. We're about halfway through Houston, the flight. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we press the oh, show. Uh, that's choppy. Apollo 12, uh, 50,526 nautical miles above the Earth. Velocity now uh, 8,122 feet per second. Uh, standing by, this is Apollo Control Houston. I don't know why his voice seemed choppy. It's like there was noise gate on it. And he was talking very softly. Okay, you said, uh, you got any more bets? The utility circuit, utility light circuit breaker on panel 11 is out. And the cabin repress circuit breaker on panel 16 is out. Roger, Peak, we copy that. Uh, stand by and we'll see if there's anything else we can do while we're in there. Okay, we're going to go through uh, the whole page here again. Plane definitely looks good from this angle. I don't know if it has any bad angles. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate. Okay, uh, Houston, we got a question. Last time we put our exterior lighting switch from dock or to off, since we'd already docked, and it may be that when it's in off, it doesn't turn out the cabin lights when you close the uh, hatch. Could you check that? Roger, we'll check that. Uh, we saw down here that when you opened the hatch, you didn't get any uh, drop in the current, and we suspect that the problem was the floodlight, but uh, stand by on that. Interesting highway down there. That's Connecticut Highway 2, it looks Pete, like. Uh, would you go ahead and verify the uh, position of the floodlight switch? Verify that it's off. Floodlights are off and exterior lighting and off. We also punched the little button on the hatch and the uh, floodlights went off. Roger, we copy. I should mention that Pete Conrad actually made a circumnavigation in a plane in a Learjet. And so this is also sort of appropriate in that respect. Conrad was sort of an adventurer and uh, died, I think, in his late 60s. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, you hear uh, 
Pete Conrad and Al Bean speaking uh, from the uh, lunar module. Conrad died in his 60s from a motorcycle accident, <laughs> so he, he was just that kind of guy. Um, always involved in aerospace. Uh, he was working on the... They're currently going through circuit breaker configurations at this time. Receiving updates uh, from Ed Gibson, our capsule communicator and mission control center. 10 hours, uh, 45 minutes. Uh, would you go ahead and open the uh, floodlight circuit breaker panel 16 and um, we'll troubleshoot. We'll be watching the current down here and see if we get a change. Yeah, he was involved in the Delta Clipper experimental SSTO launch vehicle in the 90s, and he was uh, vice president of that project. So very much involved. Yeah, to when you pull that circuit breaker to lamp, the uh, surface test feeder dropped to uh, four tenths of an amp. Correction, four tenths of a bolt. Roger, 12, uh, we confirm that. We show uh, a drop in amps back to uh, what looked the, uh, to be the same before you went in. We'd like to go ahead and leave that circuit breaker open. And uh, you can leave in that configuration when you leave the limb. When you go back in, of course, you'll just have to uh, punch it in. Well, sometimes it's just a minor little issue like that. Okay, you heard uh, heard that last exchange. Uh, the uh, amperage uh, has been brought down, uh, and uh, Ed Gibson did pass along the word to leave the uh, uh, floodlight uh, circuit breaker open uh, when they depart the lunar module. When they made that switch. Breaker back in for just a second and, uh, and go shut the hatch and watch our test meter. When they made that switch, uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank said, uh, that did it, uh, we're down where we were. We're at 10 hours 48 minutes uh, at the present time and uh, we now show an altitude uh, on Apollo 12 of 51,336 nautical miles. Uh, velocity now reads uh, 8,044 feet per second. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, okay, we're on the eastern corner of Connecticut here. Not too much going on in this area. Hello, Houston 12. 12, go ahead. Alright, I guess that's it. He, uh, I want to serve his test meter and he, he came back in and closed uh, the hatch and locked it completely and the test meter didn't drop at all. So we got back in and uh, pulled the floodlight trigger breaker and now we're down to the bottom. Roger. <laughs> This is Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 10 hours, uh, 53 minutes uh, now into the flight to Apollo 12. Uh, we're in the process of returning uh, 
Pete Conrad and Al Bean uh, to the command module at this time. Uh, their uh, return is in progress. The uh, floodlight referred to, by the way, is much like a, a refrigerator light. Uh, it's the kind of uh, device that you can punch, your, uh, punch it with your finger to turn it off. Apparently in the, the hatch closure, uh, it did not uh, adequately shut it down. And so the procedure uh, that has been taken is to leave that uh, circuit breaker open. Our amperage uh, readings are now the same as, uh, as they were uh, prior to the first uh, manned excursion uh, into the lunar module. Uh, we'll stand by and continue to monitor at uh, 10 hours, uh, 54 minutes. And this is Apollo Control Houston. Most of the days uh, on the way to the moon and back are not going to be this eventful. This is a pretty eventful day, as far as things go. Two ingresses into the LEM. Very unusual. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. 12, a while back, uh, you read to us some service module RCS propellant quantities, and they showed off-scale high. Also, the TM from that gauge is uh, still reading off-scale high, and we suspect a problem with the gauge. We'd like to uh, do some troubleshooting on that and have you uh, look at those four propellant quantity readings again and also look at this uh, service module indicator to uh, put that at helium tank temperature and read the four quantities. Uh, for your information, for your information, our uh, calculations down here show your RCS uh, total is 86, A is uh, 84, B 88, C 84, and D is 89. Obviously, wouldn't want the propellant readings okay, to be uh, wrong. I just checked all A, B, C, and D, and they're all still reading on scale high. And then the, uh, in the tank, in the service module, RCS indicator AP tank 10, it's reading 70 on A, uh, it's reading, uh, 85 <coughs> on B, uh, 85 on C, and, uh, 65 on D. Roger, Pete, copy 70, 85, 85, 65. Yeah, and, and uh, something I forgot to pass on, I guess, I think I did. When we stepped from the S4B prior to turning around, I believe it was helium one B barber pole and system A secondary propellant barber pole and uh, that was it we turned them both on and away we went Roger Pete we copy that we're currently over Rhode Island now briefly we also uh, used to think that our uh, gauge is out uh, it's been reading zero. We changed our canister at the proper time. And uh, we had, when was it, during power flight? Yeah, during launch. Yeah, during launch, we had a flashing beam CO2 light along with a few others. And, uh, and this thing jumped all over the place, and then all of a sudden it went to zero, and then it moved off the bank. So I kind of got the suspicion that the uh, CO2 gave it up. <laughs> You can see they, they, they still have quite a few problems here. It's not good to have an incorrect reading on the propellant. We, uh, confirm or suspect that down here. Or any of the other gauges for that matter. But especially the propellant.
This is Apollo Control, Houston. That's uh, Pete Conrad, uh, now back in the command module, uh, doing this troubleshooting uh, with Ed Gibson on the ground. Okay, we are over Massachusetts now, approaching Boston. We're now at uh, 11 hours, uh, 13 minutes into the flight. Uh, Apollo 12, presently 53,187 nautical miles above the Earth, and now traveling at uh, 7,870 feet per second. Now this is Apollo Control Houston, continuing to monitor. Houston. Hello there, Houston. Go ahead. So you sense you got those two indications on the uh, two barber pole indications. We'd like to uh, have you verify that you did complete the uh, step of throwing the secondary propellant uh, service module RCS to close and then back to off. Affirmative. Roger. Okay, taking a look at the map, we are here. So, about 28 nautical this miles out. This is Apollo Control Houston, 11 hours, 25 minutes. Ground elapsed time into the flight to Apollo 12. Uh, we've had no conversation with the crew of Apollo 12 for some minutes now. However, uh, we thought we would pass along to you the uh, current altitude and velocity readings. Our digital displays now show the Apollo 12 spacecraft at uh, 54,092 nautical miles above the Earth. Velocity reading uh, 7,786.9 feet per second. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the air ground loop, uh, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Definitely a cut there, so probably didn't get too much communication after that one. Again, I'm cutting out any uh, silences of a minute or more. Apollo 12, Houston. Go. Flight plan at this time calls for uh, terminating the uh, battery B charge because of the uh, exercise this morning and uh, the fact you drained down the batteries, we'd like you to uh, continue charging battery B and we suspect it'll probably go on to about uh, 13 hours. We'll give you a call when we'd like you to go to battery A. Also, you can perform your O2 fuel cell purge as planned and if you hold up or take that wastewater dump down to about 15% rather than the nominal 25. You won't have to have another dump until about mid-course two. Understand. Okay, we can see Boston there, or at least some hint of it, the little buildings there. And of course, uh, during the launch, because their fuel cells went out, they relied on the battery a bit. Not that, you know, the battery should be able to last a fair amount of time, certainly more than an hour. But, uh, I don't know what the charge rate on the batteries are from the fuel cells. This is Apollo Control Houston at 11 hours uh, 35 minutes now to the flight Apollo 12. 
Current altitude, uh, 54,812 nautical miles uh, for the Apollo 12 spacecraft above the Earth. It is uh, now traveling at 7,724 feet per second. Because our uh, conversational pace uh, with the crew is uh, spacing itself out once again, uh, uh, we will be taking the uh, air ground loop off the line and we'll play a tape of any conversations uh, as they occur. If, uh, and we will follow the same procedure as we did previously, if the situation warrants to bring the line back up live, uh, we will do so. So at uh, 11 hours, uh, 36 minutes, and continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, I think I should begin to descend now. And we're approaching Highway 95, Interstate 95, down there. Winding its way through. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 11 hours uh, 58 minutes uh, now into the flight Apollo 12. Since our last report, uh, we've only had a brief conversational exchange uh, with the crew and uh, we'll pass that along now. Okay, we're going to turn off the dump now. Roger, 12. Uh, Houston, how far out are we? Stand by, Pete. We'll give you a good figure. Thank you. Twelve, you're about uh, 56,000 miles out now, and you're smoking along at uh, 7,600 feet per second. Okay, thank you. Window. <laughs> Hogging the window. That's affirmative. Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston, go ahead. The Earth doesn't seem to be getting smaller too fast right now. But uh, it's sort of funny. It's sort of, it's just, uh, it just seems to hang out there. It doesn't, you can't see it move or anything, it just sort of hangs out there in this black space. And the moon just doesn't seem to be any bigger than it was when we left. But it's starting to look more like a sphere also. It sort of looks like a ball that's being hung out there somehow. It's really crazy. Al, uh, which way does it look like it's hanging from? <laughs> North Pole, naturally. Otherwise, the string would get all tangled up. You scientists are supposed to know that. You need some experimental proof. Boston's looking pretty good right now, I think. Hopefully, we won't hit too much of a lag wall when. Yeah, I just worry about the lag from the planes at Logan like International. You can see, uh, the coast of China and Japan. Now, it's kind of hard to tell. You can see red uh, Earth pretty well, but if there's greens or grays, it's very difficult to, to sort of put the blues. Roger, Al. That uh, glint, is that about a quarter of the way off the, uh, about halfway between the Terminator and the uh, edge? That's about right. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, presently, the Apollo 12 spacecraft 
is uh, 56,766 nautical miles above the Earth. Now traveling at a speed of uh, 7,555 uh, feet per second. Uh, you heard uh, during that uh, taped playback, uh, Commander Pete Conrad asked uh, how far, far out they were. They have progressed some 795 miles since he asked that question. That was Al Bean uh, vividly describing uh, the Earth as they viewed it uh, from in excess of 56,000 nautical miles. At uh, 12 hours, uh, three minutes into the flight of Apollo 12, this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, so coming into a landing at Logan International. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 12 hours, uh, 21 minutes, uh, now to the flight Apollo 12. The uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft at the present time, uh, 58,160 nautical miles away from Earth. It is now traveling at uh, 7,439 uh, feet per second. Since our last report, uh, we've had several conversational exchanges uh, with the Apollo 12 crew. Interestingly enough, uh, you will note that, that in these conversations, uh, the conversations are interspersed with uh, bits of music. <laughs> in uh, most instances, the country and western style prevails. Uh, Commander Pete Conrad uh, is an acknowledged uh, country and western music uh, fan. At this point, uh, we'll roll the tape. Is that you singing? No, it's working. Pete, let's hear a little of that uh, good music. A bit low here? Oh, God. I am not a country and western fan. Fortunately, the quality of the okay, music is uh, bad enough that probably hey, it won't get a, a copyright thing with Jiggy. I don't even know what song that was. Hopefully they'll keep the music to a minimum for uh, for safety's sake. But I doubt it. <laughs> they weren't they weren't really caring about me at the time. Okay. Oh God, no, no, no more, no more. Oh God. Pete, all folks down here feel that isn't half bad. All bad. Whoa, whoa, okay, this is, I'm getting knocked about a bit. Well, I'll tell you what it's done, it's precipitated a big search for the rest of the tapes. Al and Decker's <laughs> scurrying all over the spacecraft. Oh, I'm too low. Can we help? Low uh, and hard. 12. 12, Houston, go ahead. Okay, uh, what about the waste of like this? Well, you can go ahead and close it now. Okay, uh, 
and uh, we'll hold off till we finish charging battery B before we dump the battery. Well, let's on. take this taxiway. Roger, Dick, that sounds good. Okay, so. And Ed, I guess you might as well start logging this uh, leak right now for the lamb. It's uh, Delta P is plus two tenths right at this time. I don't think we'll get up to it for a day or so now, so we can start, start logging. And uh, zero on our case is point one, plus point one. All right. Roger, copy uh, Delta P point two and zero is uh, point one. So, uh, delta P was the um, difference in pressure. Anyway, so, oh, truck. Come on, man. Uh, so, hopefully, nothing went wrong with uh, that, uh, that peculiar music. And But altogether, the flight was fairly smooth and quick, under an hour from New York to Boston in this King Air C90. Uh, not... I mean, the beginning was pretty scenic. Hard to beat uh, New York, to be honest. Well, actually, Boston was pretty good, too. So, can we stop this time? Good. I like when it stops properly. And I haven't killed the brakes. No tires busted, either. So, it's alright. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.